welcome to Much More on Medicine on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series, broadcasting from our downtown studio at Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. I'm your host, Katherine Knorr. Much More on Medicine is an opportunity to learn about all aspects of healthcare. I talk with guests about medical and alternative care treatment, insurance, medication, surgery, re rehabilitation, prevention, and much more. Joining me in the studio is Dr. David Samsami. We talk about his invention, a do-it-yourself pap smear. Dr. Samsami is board certified by the American Board of Family Physicians and the American Board of Disability Anal Analysts. He earned his medical degree from the Karolinska Institute Stockholm in Sweden. He served his residency and family practice at the UC Davis Affiliated Program in Merced, California. Dr. Samsami has been a community family physician in Hawaii since 2004. He has volunteered as an assistant clinical professor at University of Hawaii, John A. Burns School of Medicine, Department of Family Medicine. Dr. Samsami, welcome. Thank you. It's great to have you. It's great to have you here today. It is an honor to be here. Okay, so um, this do-it-yourself pap smear, what is the technical name for it? The technical name for this is a cervical tissue sample device uh, that it takes samples uh, of the cells from the cervix. Okay, and so can you explain how this is done? Well, it's uh, in reality, in concept, is very simple. So it's a uh, sorts of syringe that uh, has been designed in a way that once you push it in, so it opens up a shroud that uh, there is a brush inside there, so the woman can do this at home on their own privacy. Okay. And, and uh, do it. Well, with the instruction, is a very simple. Okay, so task. why don't we take a look at it, okay? Sure, let's, sure. let's bring up the side uh, view. Okay, okay. absolutely, yeah, the, and the closed one. The mean, closed right? side yeah. view, side okay. View, yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. Okay, so what, what is this? What well, are we looking this one, at? This one is just a uh, syringe that usually, you know, we use it in a daily using in healthcare. And uh, mm, that is designed now in a way that I put a cap on the uh, syringe that has a fluid uh, inside it, and it is uh, locked by a, a, a aluminum foil or uh, something uh, that can hold the fluid inside the cap. Then uh, mm, that is the body of the uh, syringe, and inside the body, when we push in the plunger, uh, uh, the bottom part of the thing it pushes out inside the uh, chamber of the syringe. Okay, so let's look at the open uh, front view. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so what, what are we looking at this here? This one is now that uh, once uh, we push in the plunger inside, push it out, then it opens up on the top of the syringe, it opens up like a reverse umbrella, so it opens up and then uh, there is a brush that takes the sample cells, it will appear inside the uh, shrouds. Okay, and then let's look at the open side view. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what, how does, what does this show? Yeah, this one, if we say that, okay, now it has opened up, and the upper part with the shroud that is covering the brush inside, so uh, once this inserted uh, uh, inside, so with a little push, uh, automatically will align with the uh, tip of the cervix. Okay, and so, doctor, you're a family physician, and this seems to be something that uh, what a gynecologist would do. In your work as a family physician, do you actually conduct pap smears on patients? Yeah, well, it's a, a big part of the family physician is women's health. So, um, I mean, it all depends on how much a family physician is engaging, but in my practice, it has been everything, you know, as a, a pediatric to geriatrics and uh, gynecology is some portion of it. Okay, and so we know that a lot of inventions have 
inspirations. And so tell us about your inspiration that caused you to invent this. Right. I mean, besides hearing all the time that, uh, okay, this uh, position or this test is embarrassing, uh, these comments, uh, I was inspired mostly because one of my uh, patients uh, delayed in coming and doing the uh, test that she was supposed to do repeatedly and it went a couple of years and finally when the test was done, unfortunately it was invasive cervical cancer. Mm. And that gave me an idea that, okay, why don't we find an easier way uh, to, for women to be able to do it your, themselves? So in this way, you know, we will uh, avoid. Okay. So essentially, um, this device allows a woman to insert that, um, that what we, what we syringe, saw, yeah, the AR syringe, applicator, okay? yeah. and they do that at home, and by doing that, they extract cells, and then what do they do after they complete that procedure? Well, the thing is that first we target uh, which group, uh, you know, because this one uh, is designed for those people that are, you know, underserved community or hard to reach uh, people. So we say that with these people that uh, you're not, not coming for some reason, and uh, so how can we reach them? Then we mail this device home to them. And, uh, uh, you know, then the instruction, I say that, okay, now uh, can you at least do this? You know, it would be uh, anything better than nothing. So uh, if you do this, then send it back to lab. Mm. So instruction, they read it, so it's very discreet. When it goes home in a mail, then they open it and then do according to instruction, collect the cells, and then mail it to the lab. And uh, the doctor will get the result. And okay, so let's just say this procra procrastinating woman who doesn't have time to come in to see you, and they get the, they get this in the mail to do it, and they do it, and then they forget to mail it out. Um, but how long will it last before it's spoiled? Well, the, uh, I mean, I cannot say exactly the time-wise, but this, if, it, if it is a shorter period of time, I don't believe that, you know, because this uh, uh, preservative, it, it, it preserves the cells, and uh, uh, just looking it under a microscope to see whether the cells are pathologically or no normal. I don't believe that it would be, but the goal here is, and I don't believe that any uh, person that would do the test uh, would delay in mailing it. You know, they, they don't want to have any samples of anything you know, left over. But in case if they forget, I still think it's good to mail it and uh, uh, see what the lab would say. Okay. And can any laboratory analyze the cells? Those that they, yeah, uh, I mean, a standard laboratory that, they, a laboratory that they do this stuff, yes, they would be able to do it. Is it difficult to use this device at home? Not really, because uh, already a lot of uh, patients, we prescribe medicine that they use the same sorts of applicator uh, to treat other uh, bacterial vaginosis and stuff like that. So if they follow the instruction, it is very simple. Okay. And does it collect cells from multiple parts of the cervix? Yes. Uh, well, this is designed that the brush inside the thing, if we look at another picture from above that we can see the brush. Let, uh, yeah, yeah, that there we one. Go. The middle part of the uh, brush is longer than the sides of the brush. So the middle part goes into endocervical area and the outer part is gets the cervical area. And any papus, we should have both endocervical and peripheral of the cervix. Okay. Um, so how important is early detection of cervical cancer? Well, early detection of any disease is very important. And especially if it comes to a cancer form, that's uh, uh, almost life-saving. And it, uh, prevention is almost everything in medicine. So if we prevent it, we would never end up with the disease and uh, would not cost so much, both, you know, uh, economically and also emotionally. That, that would have been. So if the test is positive for precancerous cells, are there things that doctors can do? Absolutely. I mean, the test it does not need to be positive for precancerous. It can just say that they are abnormal cell. 
or uh, inflammatory. That just is a source of uh, a light that, uh, you know, say, okay, now you really need to go and get checked. And then uh, now when they do the check again and it is pathologically or, or has changed, so of course early intervention uh, uh, preserve light. Okay, fantastic. Um, so this kind of reminds me of something like 23andMe or a home pregnancy test. Is that kind of the, what this is about, doing something at home rather than going to a clinic to do it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The home devices are designed to do that, that the patient would be able to do it on their own privacy of the home. And uh, uh, pretty much it, that's the same. Okay, and so, and I also understand that they have uh, tests that you can determine like for, um, uh, for problems with the colon and um, issues uh, where they, uh, you could do a home sample. That's right. Yeah, those uh, those uh, like uh, um, cologuard or stool samples and stuff, they're uh, similar but of different type of the test. Yes, patients does it at home and send it to the lab. Okay. So now, this is an important question. Um, what other benefits are there to this test? Does it capture any other cells? Or no, absolutely. You... Uh, the, uh, it uh, captures almost all um, sexually transmitted infections, as they call it, STI. So as chlamydia, gonorrhea, HPV, human papilloma virus, and uh, also fun fungus infection, bacteria, vaginosis, trichomona, anything that could be captured, this one picks it up. So I think that sounds like a wonderful thing for people that are kind of embarrassed about going to a doctor Abs Absolutely, for that. absolutely. Because they, uh, especially younger generation that, you know, if they want to do this and then, uh, you, so it stops the spreading. And then also it gives them a, a source of idea, now I have to go to the doctor and get treatment. Okay. Um, so, uh, now, how prevalent is this problem of cervical cancer in the world? It is, uh, I mean, there's a quite large number of uh, women that, uh, you know, yearly, worldwide, uh, you know, be uh, offered to this disease and die of the disease. There's a great number of people, and somewhere around, let's say, 6%, and uh, so that, that they develop. Uh, cervical cancer that leads to death. Okay. So. All right. Um, so, doctor, um, now, um, is the device difficult to use? I mean, we... No, uh, I mean, uh, uh, if, if they really read the instruction properly, like any other, as I mentioned, when we prescribe uh, medicine with applicator, they, they have to read it that, okay, how is it? To do that, it's not difficult at all. That following the instruction is very simple and safe. Okay, fantastic. Uh, this is Catherine Noor, much more on medicine with Dr. Samsami. Aloha, this is Rob Hack. My show is Exporting from Hawaii every other Thursday from 12 to 12.30 p.m. where I bring in people involved in the entire exporting infrastructure in Hawaii, including government, academia, and manufacturers and shippers themselves. Please join me every other Thursday, 12 to 12.30 p.m. on Exporting from Hawaii. Mahalo. Aloha, I'm Melly James, host of Let's Mana Up. Tuesdays, every other Tuesday, from 11 to 11.30. This show is meant to dive into stories of local product entrepreneurs and how they're growing their companies from right here in Hawaii. I'm so thrilled to have our show kicked off. And so please join us on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock as we talk to local entrepreneurs and hear their stories. We're back, we're live. I'm Katherine Knorr, and this is much more on medicine on the Think Tech Live streaming network series and we're talking with Dr. David Samsami about his new invention of a do-it-yourself pap smear. Doctor, do you have a patent? Yes, this one is the US patent recently uh, and uh, it has been patented. That's big news and 
It sounds like it's just going to be an amazing product for many populations. Can yes, you? that's the hope that, uh, that we can reach those that are very difficult to reach, and then we would save lives. That's the whole idea behind the event. Okay, so the type of populations that would benefit um, those are people in rural areas, and what other types yeah. of populations? No, I mean, any uh, um, population can use this, as we mentioned also. If some people, due to privacy, uh, you know, or religion reason, they don't mm -hmm. want to go to, to uh, their doctors and stuff. So those will be identified, and then they can request. So, uh, you know, a device will be sent home to them, at least to get it done. Okay. Now, of course, we don't say that this would replace the doctor's examination. We still say that uh, that would be the best if uh, somebody can go and be examined by their doctor. Okay. It's All an right. adjunct. To... So I think this might lead to some cost savings. Is that correct? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, uh, one of the um, good uh, benefit of this device is, is the cost. But uh, saving lives is uh, priceless. So we cannot say that, okay, just because it's cheaper, we got to go uh, you know, to do that. But no, in today's society, uh, we need to have a low cost healthcare okay. with the best uh, source of service. And so that one is a fraction of a price of, of, of a pap smear. But still, we won't say that just because of that, that for this reason, we are going to introduce this. No, we want to introduce it in order to get more people to get tested. Okay. So in this way, yeah. And, you know, one thing that I didn't ask you, and I think this is important, what is a pap smear? Yeah, a pap smear is a, a sort of test that uh, before was uh, yearly that uh, women uh, need to do it. Then uh, nowadays, uh, they say that if it has been normal. So it's a test that um, ladies go to their doctor and uh, the doctor uh, take the same method that we're doing with the brush, take test from the cervical area and then send it for analysis and see that, you know, whether it's normal or abnormal or if it is an infection or whatever. So that's what the pap smear means. Okay. okay. And um, how often do women normally get a pap smear? Before, yeah, before was uh, recommended to be done yearly. Then as uh, um, years went by, so now they recommend that, uh, you know, every two to three years, three years, that would be the maximum if the pap smear consequently is normal. Okay. But if the uh, patient somehow would like to get it done yearly, still they, uh, they wouldn't say no, they would recommend it to do. Okay, so if now, uh, before your invention, people would have to go to their doctor and have this done, how much would a doctor's office visit cost? Well, I would estimate that uh, in the office, uh, Papa Smear does it when you charge the insurance and some pay, somewhere around $180. That would be the cost of the office visit and the a service that the doctor is doing, then uh, of course this one is not embedded the uh, lab cost uh, in it. You know, lab, I have absolutely no idea how much they would charge to uh, do it, they charge insurances. And uh, so it would be a quite big uh, difference between get it done privately or get it done at the office. Okay, so and then the cost of this device about like if Let's just say an insurance company was paying for it. Right, right. How, what would be the range? Well, it is, of course, uh, you know, I would guess, I, I, I'm not professionally making or manufacturing this, but it shouldn't be expensive. I would guess somewhere around 15 to $20 sure. uh, would cost. So it would be around one-fifth of the price of the. Okay. Uh, so we're looking at the difference between a cost of like $180 office visit and a $10 to $15 test that someone could do in the privacy of their own home that would not only perform a pap smear, obtain, get those cells to be tested for cervical cancer, but also could detect um, the SDIs. SDIs, okay? That's right. Okay. So that seems like a huge benefit. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. So when I, when I kind of think about the 
potential advantages of this. I think about all these countries that, like such as Africa, or um, for example, Africa, lots of remote areas, uh, not served uh, potentially by doctors. Is that no, correct? No, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, in Africa, it's not the need to be remote. You know, even in their cities, <laughs> areas they don't have that much of a doctors uh, per uh, you know population that they should serve. So there's a lot of underserved people okay. that, uh, that, uh, that could be targeted and saved. And then when I think people. about the Middle East or parts of Asia, I think about the uh, need t uh, for privacy. Absolutely. Okay, where some populations, they can't see a male doctor. Absolutely. Okay. The cultural set, there are uh, a lot of cultures that uh, women don't like to be uh, you know, examined by, by a male. And uh, so in this way, uh, I don't believe that they would mind to do it themselves. And uh, any, any woman would, would like to be tested by a you know, female examiner or male examiner. Sure. Uh, still, they would say that I would prefer, if I can do it myself, I would prefer to do it myself. Okay. And then we even have populations like in the north, for example, I know you um, went to school in Stockholm. And that's right, and yeah. I, when I look at, at the, those countries, Scandinavian countries, they have a lot of really remote oh, areas, yes, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. You know, there are some places in Sweden or Norway or Finland that it's about four or five hours uh, to the closest uh, facility. So this would and be a lot that, easier. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I okay. think that they would be very much interested and because they usually... Uh, uh, invest in preventive medicine. Okay, fantastic. Right. Okay, and um, so, and then when I look at countries like um, the UK or Canada, they try to provide care to all of their um, citizens, and so this would probably benefit them as well, correct? Absolutely, I mean, now if we, we, we shouldn't go that far to UK, or so in the United States now, almost everywhere, every state, uh, their goal is to uh, uh, give the best health care and lowest cost. All the insurance companies, uh, you know, encourage doctors that, you know, to bring in people for annual health examination just to prevent. So, so even in the United States, they would be <laughs> very much benefited. Yeah, and especially Hawaii, where yeah, we have absolutely. outer islands, right? Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and we even have islands that don't have many doctors. Oh, like absolutely. Lanai sure, and yeah. That, is, that, that was the whole goal to uh, target those people. Okay. That Fantastic. Okay. So, the, does the um, using the cervical um, uh, tissue sample device, does that mean that? A patient doesn't have to see a gynecologist? No. Exactly as I mentioned, we even uh, recommend uh, the very high. Nothing can replace a doctor's examination. Mm -hmm. So that's why we encourage them. This is just that for some reason, if they cannot do it, so it will not take two years, three years after, uh, you know, whatever test has shown that it become like so late, like the other patient I mentioned, that. So this says, okay, now if you cannot do it, you can, or you have no possibility to go to the doctor, so we send it home to you, you get it done. At least, uh, you know, it, it gives us some idea uh, where in time that person is. So it really doesn't replace that um, hands-on um, visit with the doctor who checks other health issues like, like uh, breast, health and no, other absolutely things. absolutely okay. not absolutely not nothing in reality can replace a, a doctor's visit test sure yeah even even now if they send a, a test for colon cancer uh, still colonoscopy is the gold the standard that needs to be done mm -hmm. but of course it prevents a lot of uh, time you know for early stage so they find out that, yes, okay, there was a blood in a stool, or there was this and there was that. So it captures it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. earlier. So if there is a, let's just say that there's a positive finding and uh, the lab comes back with a positive finding, does that go, back, go does the test go to their physician? Yes. They, uh, they, um, it is that way since they, they are sent home from the physician to those targeted patients. So the result will go to, to uh, a doctor, 
and the doctor, you know, will, will write a letter or uh, stating that, okay, it was this, so uh, come, you know, for, for a real more thorough examination. Okay. okay, and so if it's positive, then they'll probably have a repeat in the office? Is that uh, yes, possible? absolutely, okay. yeah. Then uh, it's like any other test. Even sure. we do a smear and it becomes in the office setting positive, then we say that, okay, uh, if what the stage it is, then whether in six months or one year, you have to repeat the test. But it is on alert that something is wrong. Okay, so the, the person who has always had negative pap smears or hasn't had one yet, they could probably do this. But once it starts being positive, then we're really shifting into actual hands-on medicine. Absolutely, okay. absolutely. And, uh, and so, but the younger generation, of course, uh, we recommend to do this test, uh, not just for the pap smear purposes, just for the STI, oh. you know, because a lot of them go silent. Sure. And sure. <laughs> spreading in a community and so on. Yeah. And, and so it not only um, is a good thing in relation to cervical cancer, but also um, could, could help uh, prevent the spread of uh, STIs. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Well, doctor, it's been fantastic talking with you today. And, yeah. and I'm so it's excited an about your... Um, about your invention. Well, thank you for having me. And this so, um, well, um, I, I just want to say we really appreciate it. And uh, so we're out of time today, but we'll have to, and we'll have to wrap this up. I'm Catherine Knorr. This is much more on medicine on the Think Tech live streaming network series. Uh, we've been talking with doc, Dr. David Samsami about his invention of a do-it-yourself pap smear. And uh, um, thank you for joining us today, thank doctor. You. And uh, thanks to our broadcast engineer, our floor manager, Appreciate and it, to yeah. Jay Fidel, our executive producer, who puts it all together. Please join us for future ThinkTech productions. Thank you. Thank you.